हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द डिस्कशन ऑफ द एमसीक्यूज ऑन द रेस्पिरेटरी डिसऑर्डर्स एंड द सीएनएस डिसऑर्डर्स इन अ न्यूनिट सो स्टार्टिंग विद द क्वेश्चन वन थर्टी फाइव वीक्स ओल्ड फीमेल बॉर्न वाया इलेक्टिव एल एस सी एस क्राइड इमीजिएटली आफ्टर बर्थ एंड डिड नॉट रिक्वायर एनी रिसेसिटेशन मदर इज प्राइमी ग्रेविडा हु हैड नो रिस्क फैक्टर फॉर सेप्सिस शी डेवलप टेकिपीनिया सून आफ्टर बर्थ विद माइल्ड टू मॉडरेट सब कॉस्टल रिसेशन लाइकली डायग्नोसिस नो वट आई कैन एक्सक्लूड आउट ऑफ दिस थर्टी फाइव वीक्स इज बींग गिवन दैट रूल्स आउट हाइलिन मैमरिन डिजीज बिकॉज सरफेक्टेंट प्रोडक्शन इज कंप्लीटेड बाई थर्टी फाइव वीक्स सेकेंड एपनिया ऑफ प्री मेचोरिटी ऑलवेज प्रेजेंट्स बिटवीन टू टू सेवन डेज आफ्टर बर्थ दिस विल नेवर प्रेजेंट इन द फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स दिस इज रूल्ड आउट देर इज नो रिस्क फैक्टर फॉर सेप्सिस न्यू न्यूटल सेप्सिस इज रूल्ड आउट बिकॉज अर्ली न्यू न्यूटल सेप्सिस कैन प्रेजेंट एस निमोनिया सो वॉट इज लेफ्ट इज बेसिकली द ट्रांजियन टेकिपीनिया ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न सो दिस इज बेसिकली ट्रांजियन टेकिपीनिया ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न दिस इज ओनली गिवन टेकिपीनिया विच इज सीन एंड इन ट्रांजियन टेकिपीनिया ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न ऑलवेज रिमेंबर्स देयर इज नो क्रैप्स देयर इज नो रॉन्ग काय लंग फील्ड्स आर क्लियर दिस इज द पॉइंट टू बी रिमेंबर्ड इन द टी टी एक्स Moving on to the next one, a newborn whose estimated gestational age is 42 weeks is stained with meconium. Tracheal intubation reveals meconium in the hypopharynx as well as below the vocal cords. The infant has respiratory distress. A chest radiograph is obtained. The most likely radiographic findings is now. If you consider, this is a question of meconium aspiration syndrome, and if you see the mechanism of the lung damage, one mechanism of lung damage can be chemical pneumonitis and in particularly chemical pneumonitis what you get is the lung infiltrates what you get is the lung infiltrates so that is the most common finding which you get so the most common finding is this infiltrates there can be partial obstruction of airway and due to the partial obstruction of airway the air will go inside inspiration but will not come out in expiration so this will result in emphysema and this will cause the over inflation and this will basically cause the over inflation then there will be total obstruction of the airway and due to the total obstruction of the airway there will be collapse and this is what we say is atelectasis atelectasis and this will result in the collapse so if you see the radiographic findings it can be lung infiltrates it can be over inflation it can be collapse but the most common is the lung infiltrates that is the coarse infiltrates which are there full term neonate developed pphn that is persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn following meconium aspiration syndrome and the investigation out of the four required is echocardiography echocardiography is in fact considered to be the gold standard to diagnose pphn this is the gold standard basically to diagnose the persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn out of the following regarding the surfactant production regarding surfactant there are certain things which you need to remember surfactant production starts in fetal lung at 20 weeks of gestation it starts in the fetal lung at the 20 weeks of the gestation so here this particularly starts this is stored in type 2 pneumocytes so this is not stored in the type 1 pneumocytes this is stored in the type 2 pneumocytes so this is wrong maternal steroids antenatal steroids they increase the surfactant production antenatal steroids they increase the surfactant production so if you are saying is they increase so that means this is wrong that is increased infant of diabetic mother in infant of diabetic mother you need to remember insulin is antagonist to cortisol insulin is antagonist to cortisol and cortisol is required for surfactant release 
सो दिस बेसिकली डिक्रीजेस दी सर्फेक्टेंट दिस बेसिकली डिक्रीजेस दी सर्फेक्टेंट प्रोडक्शन राइट सो आउट ऑफ दिस द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट इज दिस स्टार्ट एट ट्वेंटी वीक्स ऑफ जेस्टेशन न्यू बॉर्न बेबी इज मिकोनियम स्टेन इज हैविंग लेबर ब्रीदिंग एट बर्थ ऑन एग्जामिनेशन साइनोसिस इज प्रेजेंट मोस्ट अप्रोप्रिएट नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज revised neonatal resuscitation guidelines in 2015 we are says tracheal suction is not required we are saying is tracheal suctioning is not required you need to manage according to the steps of neonatal resuscitation so if the child is having the labored breathing if the child is having the labored breathing what is the next step to be done we need to start this cpap continuous positive airway pressure so here it is given labored breathing so your answer should be cpap don't get confused with the meconium staining right now you need to follow the neonatal resuscitation guidelines all of the following can be seen in a child having hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy except now if you see which is the most common cause of neonatal seizure the most common cause of neonatal seizure is hie so definitely you can see this if there is hypoxia there will be particularly delayed fall in pvr right hypoxia basically leads to the delayed fall in the pvr and if there is delayed fall in the pulmonary vascular resistance you can definitely get pphn myocardial failure hypoxia the morbid sensitive or after sensitivity after brain is the heart only to hypoxia this can be seen but rop is something related to increased amount of oxygen not less amount of oxygen so here particularly the rop is the answer which is except newborn two days of age is suspected to have jitteriness all of the following are true regarding jitteriness except now jitteriness is something which is tumulus sensitive a stimulus is required and the jitteriness is something which can be abolished so therefore this is true that there is this can be stopped this is true right there is no involvement of i or tongue no involvement of the i or tongue so this means this point is true there is no involvement of autonomic nervous system so this is also true so which is not true that the change in the heart rate is present no there is no change in the heart rate which is seen here right so simple question seizure and jitteriness differentiation which has been asked two or three times prior in assessing the severity of birth asphyxia out of the following which is more reliable birth asphyxia means you are talking of hie hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and if you look at the definition what the definition says apgar score is less than 3 at 5 minutes but american academy of pediatrics said apgar is an individual observation this individual can make a mistake so this is not a reliable thing so what they said presence of fetal acidosis and fetal acidosis means the ph is less than 7 because if there is hypoxia there should be acidosis so out of this the most thing the most important out of this is the umbilical cord gas level umbilical cord particularly you want to know the presence of the acidosis so that is the right answer here next one neonate is diagnosed to have seizure on day 2 after birth there is no significant antenatal history no history of abnormal events during delivery which are the following is first investigation to be done when you see the management of neonatal seizure always the first step is to correct hypoglycemia and if this glucose level is okay the next step is to correct hypocalcemia the next step is to correct hypocalcemia so therefore which is the first investigation to be done in neonatal seizure that is always blood glucose and the neonatal hypoglycemia is blood glucose level i am talking of neonatal blood sugar level less than 45 mg per deciliter 
blood sugar less than 45 mg per deciliter. In a preterm child born at 30 weeks of gestation, there is intraventricular hemorrhage. This risk of following. They are simply asking what is the complication of the IVH intraventricular hemorrhage. If you just consider like this, there is hemorrhage in the ventricle. And if there is hemorrhage in the ventricle, this ventricle size will increase. So if this ventricle size will increase, it will on the lateral side will be displaced like this. So the spaces between the meninges will be obliterated. So there will be obliteration of the subarachnoid space. And if there will be obliteration of the subarachnoid space, what will happen? CSF will not be reabsorbed and this will result in the hydrocephalus. So basically speaking, the complication of the intraventricular hemorrhage is hydrocephalus. So right answer is hydrocephalus. So in this I have discussed regarding some of the important MCQs related to respiratory disorders and the CNS disorders in the neonate. Do subscribe to this channel for the more updates. Thanks.